as an athlete, one part of your legacy that needs to be good is your actions off the court. Teams and organizations are very strict about certain activities a player does in public. They're especially strict with highly valued players on their team. Well, if there is one guy who has been killing it in college and has a very bright future but was believed to have been involved in a messed up tragedy, it would be Brandon Miller. Miller has played so well in Alabama that he is projected to be at least a lottery pick next year and maybe even a top 5 draft pick. Miller's game seems to be improving daily as he recently dropped 41 points against South Carolina. His future in basketball is very bright. However, an action off the court might prevent him from being himself. Miller was allegedly involved in a shooting where he distributed a gun, causing the death of a 23-year-old woman. Because of this event, people now look at Miller like he's a killer who should be locked up. This shooting will change Brandon Miller's life and basketball career forever. Before we break down what exactly happened the day of the shooting, let's look at Miller's background to see why he was such a big deal. Brandon Miller is a 6 foot 9, 200 pounder straight out of Tennessee. When he was in high school, let's just say he was a beast. He played two seasons with Kane Ridge's varsity team, and he balled out. In his junior year, he averaged 23 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals, and 2 blocks per game. He was insane. But wait, his senior season was just as good and maybe even better. He averages 26 points, 8 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals, and a block per game. When looking at a scouting report, he was given a lot of credit. A few scouting reports were given on him, but I'll read just one of them to not bore you. According to Jerry Meyer, a director of basketball scouting, he evaluated Miller's game back in 2021, and here's what he had to say. Quote, Great length as a combo forward at a long 6'8". Is thin now, but has the frame to add body mass. More of a smooth athlete than an explosive athlete, but can make plays in traffic. Will do more of that with added strength and added mental toughness. Has tremendous body control and can stop on a dime for a shot and also make improvising moves to finish. Has a great shooting touch, in process of developing a more consistent deep range shot. Quite adept at finishing the mid range shot. Loves to shoot going left, especially with a hop back move or spin move that direction. Also, a good finisher around the rim, handles the ball well in space. Meyer continued on by saying, quote, Can't get too high with the dribble in traffic, sees the court and will deliver the pass on the move, needs to up his intensity on the defensive end, has a feel for blocking shots, often, however, plays too upright and without enough strength at the point of attack has great hands as a rebounder, developing strength will certainly aid him as a rebounder, has a ton of potential, key is tightening up his skills and his mental toughness while gaining weight and strength. As we can see, some good and bad are mentioned, but for the most part, he looked like the next big thing. He would then get accepted into the University of Alabama. This season was his first year playing with the team, and let's look at how Alabama looked in previous years. This was Alabama's record in the past four seasons. They did very well in 2020-21, to but if we look at the other three seasons, they're not too good. So look at those years, and now look at this year. As we can see, Alabama is on a roll. They're 14-1 in their conference and 24-4 and in total. Alabama is looking like the best team in college basketball. And one reason they're looking so good is because of the man himself, Brandon Miller. This season, Miller is averaging 19 points, 2 assists, 8 rebounds, and a steal and block per game. He is playing like a true starter. Not only that, but he recently dropped 41 points against South Carolina, which is unbelievable. It's as if Miller is developing more and more every single day. This 41 point game was a milestone he will never forget. But one thing you might not know about this game was that Miller wasn't even supposed to play as many people believed he should be in jail. Matter of fact, people were chanting lock him up during the game as they believed he was a killer. Let me explain to you a story that changed Brandon Miller's life. And just so you know, a huge part of the story allegedly happened and is not 100% proven. I'm not sure if some of the information has been confirmed or not, but if it has, please let me know down in the comments, that would be well appreciated. 
On January 15, 2023, two men named Michael Davis and Darius Miles went out to dinner. The two also hit up a bar that night, which was not too far away from Alabama's campus. These two were up for quite a while as the shooting was reported at 1.45 a.m. So let's get straight to the shooting, which will confuse you due to how dumb the reason is. Darius Miles, who if you don't know, plays for Alabama as well and has a great role on the team, was trying to talk to a 23-year-old woman named Jamia Harris. It was reported that these two never knew each other and one was trying to talk to the other. Now I'm not sure what exactly Miles was trying to do, whether he was trying to get in touch or have a normal conversation, but either way, it wasn't that big of a deal. Harris allegedly ignored Miles, and due to not getting a response, he got triggered. Brandon Miller was the man who had Miles' gun. So Miles, believed to be under the influence of alcohol, texted Miller to bring him the gun. Miller drove and arrived at the scene with Miles' gun. Harris was in a vehicle, and Davis, who was in the back of Miller's car with Miles, took the shot and sadly killed her. The saddest part about this story is that Jamia Harris has a five-year-old son. This poor child will have to live without his mother for the rest of his life. It's honestly so sad. And Miles and Davis made a horrible move. Both Miles and Davis have been charged with capital murder. Miller, however, has not been charged with anything. He was not believed to have played a role and his lawyer backed him up quite well. Miller's lawyer said that Brandon never touched the gun but was used by his teammates. But in the end, here's what we can agree on. It's obvious that Darius Miles and Michael Davis's basketball careers are over. I'd go as far as to say their futures are over. What they did that night will take a miracle to get out of. After hearing about the story, we knew they wouldn't get out of this clean. But for Brandon Miller, his career has been affected, but he still has a chance to make it to the NBA. Many people can say Miller messed up because he listened to Miles and brought the gun, or some could say he was the driver that played a role in the killing. But we aren't 100% sure of the context, whether he was forced to bring the gun or if he decided to. This story is still left with some questions, but soon enough, we could get some answers. In the end, Brandon Miller's basketball career could take a hit from this, with fans believing he should be locked up, and I'm sure there are at least a couple coaches, GMs, or even players who agree with the fans, it's not going to be easy for Brandon Miller to have a normal basketball career. We will see how his future goes, but all I know is that he will be surrounded by controversy. Before we end today's video guys, I did come across a GoFundMe for Jamia Harris's son, and I'm not saying you guys necessarily have to donate, but just know anything that you give will help for a good cause. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If so, leaving a like and subscribing would be well appreciated as well as maybe even going on the GoFundMe page and donate a bit of cash. Besides that, I will see you all in the next video. I'm out.